let everybody stand as we go before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we just worship you. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the presence of God. We thank you that you're able to do above all that we can ask or think. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God, we just thank you. We open up our spirits, our mind, God. Touch our, our soul, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, as we just open up the windows, God, as we just God, lay open our hearts, God. You, oh, Father God, we just thank you for everything that you are able to do. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. Spirit of the living God, open up, God, our hearts. Spirit of the living God, open up our wills right now in the name of Jesus, God. Put us as one of your in the name of Jesus. Touch our careers, touch our families, touch our friends, touch our loved ones right now in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah! Glory to God. There's none like you, Elohim. There's none like you, Abaday. There's none like you, El Elyon. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus. We glorify you right now in Jesus' name. We exalt you right now in the name of Jesus, God. Touch every spirit on the sound of my voice. Touch every spirit on the sound of my voice right now, God. Oh, God, move upon us, God. Move upon us like never before. Oh, we echo in the spiritual realm. We speak to those things that we are as though they were God. God, manifest your blessings in our life. Manifest your miracles in our life. Manifest your healings in our life right now, God. God, the prayers that are going up, God. The requests that are going up right now, God. Let the windows of heaven be open right now. Pour out a blessing like never before. Pour out a blessing like never before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We receive you right now, God. We can't do nothing without you. We can't praise you. Yes, we can't worship without your Holy Spirit. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. Say, stay encouraged. You know what? Say, some of you know that God is hearing our prayers. God is hearing our prayers. Say, I was in prayer on Monday. Five minutes into my prayer, God showed me a window. God showed the window. And as I was watching that window in the spirit realm, I seen that window all of a sudden open up. Boom. And when that window opened up, I began to see water pour out. Water began to pour out. And God told me to tell you today, the spirit of the Lord began to tell you, tell, told me to tell you today that God is pouring out a blessing upon my life. If you've been praying, if you've been seeking God for a situation, if you've been asking God to touch a situation, God is pouring out his blessing upon his life. And when I say that when I open, I say, God, what is going on? But the scripture that came to my mind was Malachi 3 and 10. God said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. So I want you to stay encouraged, say, stay encouraged, say, no matter what you're going through, stay encouraged, say, no matter what you hear, stay encouraged, say, no matter what circumstances come against you, stay encouraged, say, hallelujah, we just going to worship God for a little bit here, okay, hallelujah, come on, put your hands together.
mercy endure it forever. He both He both we were not so you. Hallelujah. 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 We are not so you. you are. Oh, we were so We were so you. Hallelujah. 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 We were so
Father, we just thank you on today, God, for yes, God. your grace and your yes, mercy, God. God. God, we thank you for your loving kindness. God, we just ask that you just bless the service on yes. this morning, God. Let the word that I bring forth on this morning be in due season. We adore you, we worship you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just welcome everyone that's streaming with us on this morning. We give you the glory and we thank you for, for everything. You know, we just appreciate you because you did not have to come in and visit us live or even in person on this morning. So what I'm going to be doing, we had started on last, last on Mother's Day, I had started a battle plan message. So I'm just going to continue with that. Um, so th today is going to be part two, the spirit of motherhood. And the title of my message on today is this going to be simply let go and let God. Amen. Let God handle the remains. Let go and let God. And let, God. Hallelujah. let God handle the remains. And I'm going to, the scripture passages that I'm going to be in on this morning are going to be found, are going to be found in St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th to the 30th verse, 1 Peter 5 and 7, Hebrews 4, 9 and 11, Psalms 34 and 15. Hallelujah. Again, those Hallelujah. scripture passages are going to be St. Matthew 28, 11, 28 through 30. It's going to be Hebrews 4, 9, and 11. Psalms 34 and 15. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to reverse in St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses it reads come unto me all that ye all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light 1 Peter 5 and 7 reads, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the ninth and the eleventh verses. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people all of right, God. All right. For he that is entered into this rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. When he said the same example, he saw he's referring back to Hebrews uh, chapter 11 when he was speaking how the children of Israel were moving in unbelief. Amen. In my final passage, Psalms 34 and 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto his and to their pride. So on this morning, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be going to two stories about mothers on today. It's going to be the widow at Zarephath and the widow at Nain. The widow at Zarephath and the widow at Nain. And again, my topic on this morning is let God handle the remains. Hallelujah. Let God <laughs> handle the remains. Yes. When, when, Ray, when raising our children, Sometimes we get to the point in life where we simply say, I can't. God, I just can't. I can't. God, I just can't. You you know, mothers, you know what I'm talking about. Those private bathroom cries that we have. You know, we go in the bathroom, we, you know, we, we sit, you know, we just down on the floor, curl up in a, in a, in a, in a knot, saying, God, you know what? I can't. God, help me. I can't. God, help me. I can't. And then we come out, we come out of the bathroom saying, I'm good. But we all know for a mother, the bathroom is more than just a place to take showers. Amen. The bathroom is more than just a place to put our makeup on. That bathroom oftentimes becomes our sanctuary. That becomes, that becomes the place where we actually go and we cry out to God. When we get to those I can't moments, 
we get in that bathroom and we sometimes we're our, our children or even our spouses don't know. I know sometimes I have been like down in a corner, just curled up in a knot, Amen. saying, God help me, God. God help me, Lord. God touch me, God. God, I just can't. Hallelujah. And that cry is the help because of the result of multi multi-layered intersections yes, of yes. life complexities. Yes. You know, bodies, frailties, emotional breakdowns that our children yes. have to endure. Yes. You know, our children, they're they're up against some serious things, you know, in this particular age. So that cry, God help me, that bathroom sling is not curled up in the yes. corner. God, I can't. God, help me. God, help my child. Yes. God, yes. touch my child. Yes. God, I plead the blood over their life. Yes. In other words, sometimes our children are drawn into life situations that surpasses our understanding. That's right. That surpasses what we can even do. That surpasses our health. And even in the society that we're dealing with on today, death has taken on a new meaning. Yes, we you know that you know that there, there's the traumatizing death of a child, but also death has taken on a new meaning to our children. You know, death, death to peer pressure, you know, death of the drugs, death of the alcohols, death of the games. It has taken on a new yes. meaning. Say that, Carol. But only Christ has the ability to reverse the stronghold of sin. Yes. He can handle the remains. Yes. Six words. Come unto me. Hallelujah. Cast your cares. Come unto me. Cast your cares. Let God handle the remains. St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th to the 30th, 30th verse reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. First Amen. Peter goes on to say, casting yes. all your care upon him, for he cared for you. And I'm sure that our children fall on that care list. Hallelujah. Amen. A simple promise. That he says, come unto me. A simple promise can relieve complex burden. If he can, but what we have to do, all we have to do is believe Amen. that the power behind the promise is strong enough to relieve the heaviness. Amen. We got to believe that the power behind the promise Hallelujah. is strong enough to handle the remains. Amen. Your child out there bad, remains. God can still touch them. Yes. He can still restore. Come unto me. A simple call. A simple promise from Jesus. He simply offers himself as a solution. Amen. That all that burden is Absolutely. us. But Jesus, he knew that not only he is our salvation, but he's our fortress. He's a mighty rock. He's our refuge. We can go to him. We can call on him. He is the one who answers every question, every concern, every fear and need that we may have. For our hope is from him. Only in him will we find rest for our soul. The scripture goes on to say, after it says, come unto me, it goes on to say, take my yoke. Now, a yoke is placed on the beast of a burden in order to do some work. So the yoke is placed there to, to relieve the burden, the help. To help that, to help that beast or that the animal that's doing the work. So Jesus is offering. So what he's offering us here, he's offering us rest from our works. Amen. Now we know in this particular, we know in this particular passage of scripture, um, and you know theologically so that when he's talking about come unto me all that ye labor, he's talking about the labor of the law. He's talking about the burden of the law. Yeah. Okay, but not only is he available for us when it comes from our works. But anything that we're trying to work out on our behalf Amen. of our children that's above our means, that's above our abilities. So he said, take my yoke. I want to help you with this burden. I'm going to come aside. I'm going to come alongside with you with this burden when it comes to your children. And the ultimate yoke exchange is the cross. 
Jesus takes our heavy yoke of sins, condemnation, and on, penalty, Carolina. and he offers us yes, in exchange the easy yoke. Amen. And the light Amen. burden of just simply trusting him. <laughs> he didn't say, come unto me and try to figure it out. He didn't say, I need you to understand how this yoke exchange is going to work. He just says, come. And all we have to do is believe that the power behind the promise of coming unto me is more powerful than the situation. Say that, Carolyn. Amen. Amen. So he does all the work and gives us all the rest. Hallelujah. And his work not only his work not only fully addresses our sin position, but also it supplies our every other need that we have. All we're required to do is to trust in him. Amen. So when so you know, so when some weeks so when we have the mama bathroom sessions, when we go in our our, our sanctuary, you know, also known as the bathroom. So what we're doing, we're coming to God saying, you know what, God, I need you to handle these things. God, I, 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 mm. I, 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 I need you to take over. God, I understand where my strength ends and where yours, where yours begins. Jesus' great invitation for us to come to him. Come to him and exchange yokes. Come to him and exchange yokes. My power for your weakness. Come to him and exchange yokes. And we'll find rest so that we don't have to carry it. Another, another thing about the cross, when it comes to the cross we've been teaching on Tuesday nights, the cross not only removes guilt and condemnation, but it removes isolation. Amen. Because we were isolated from God, from God. The Bible says in Ephesians how we were alienated from him. But the cross took away all that isolation. So now when Jesus says, come unto me, take my yoke, you no longer have to, you no longer have to deal with life's issues in isolation or in your own strength. Hallelujah. Come unto me. Let God handle those remains. And in 1 Peter 5 and 7, the word cast just means to throw far away. Amen. It mean, it's similar to when you go, when you go on fishing. When you have your fishing rod, you don't you don't you don't leave it. You don't go out in your boat or sitting on a bank and just leave your fishing rod at your side. What you do, you take that fishing rod, and for those of you that fish, you take that fishing rod and you, you kind of put it to the side and you cast it out as far as you can away from you, Amen. because you want to receive something. So that so if you want to, if I wanted to give you like a natural analogy of what the word cast means in First Peter five and seven. It just means to throw away from, to, to get it to throw away from you. This thing of when you go fishing, next time you, those of in you who do fishing, that uh, fish, just think about it. Next time you go out on the, the lake or the water's in the bank, when you cast that, cast that ride into, you cast that ride into the water, you say, Lord, I remember that Sunday. She said, casting my cares. When I cast this ride out into the water, I'm casting my cares. If that's what he means, this cast your cares upon me. Amen. Now, on the psychological level, I'm gonna. I just wanted to just go uh, since I'm talking about still continue talking about mothers. But talk, I want to just use two stories to show you how two two widows in the Bible how they understood that it was going it was going to take God and God alone to handle those remains. Yes. On a psychological level, psychologists will tell you the highest stress level that a person can experience is the loss of a spouse or the loss of a child. I would, I, in my mind, I would, was, was thinking, oh, the loss of a parent, but no. Psychologists, if, if you look, when, they, when, when, they're, when they're dealing with uh, grief, they'll tell you that the most traumatic, the most psychological level of trauma that a person can experience in their life is gonna be the life of a spouse or the life of a child. So let's go, let's go to, uh, let's look at how uh, God and how, how Jesus reacts to two situations on this morning. We're going to, um, I'm going to go in um, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, the 17th through the 24th verse. I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, but I'm going to focus, after I read that particular passage of scripture, I am going to focus on verses 17 and 22. Again, I'm going to be in 1 Kings. 17th chapter, the 17th through the 24th verses, and this is dealing with the widow at Zarephath. 
And it reads, later on, the woman's son became sick. The sickness took a turn for the worse, and then he stopped breathing. The woman said to Elijah, why did you ever show up here in the first place? A holy man barging in, exposing my sins, and killing my son. So if you read back a couple of verses earlier in this chapter, you see that she had came to Elijah had came to her on a previous occasion and had room there for a minute. So she says, you know, I'm killing my son. And Elijah said, hand me your son. In other words, hand me the remains. Hand me your son. Because you see, it just said in, ver in this verse that it took a turn for the worse. He stopped breathing. So it's the remains. He's asking her, give me, just give me the remains. And that's what God is asking, to, telling us as mothers on the day. Give me the remains. Yes. Well, well, God, oh, well, you know yeah. what? My child is out there. You know, he, you know, he's strung. You know, he's strung out. He he running with the wrong people. Yeah. He's dead in trespasses and sin. God has said, "Give me those remains." Yeah. So, and, and, and Elijah said, "Hand me your son." He then took him from her bosom and carried him up to the law where he was staying and laid him on his bed. So it didn't, it didn't say he took him out and said, we're going to get some great clothes for him. We get ready to do the burial because we got to do it within so many days. He says, no, he said, give me, give me your remains. Give him to me. So it says he took him up and he laid him on his bed. Then he prayed, oh, God, my God, why have you brought this terrible thing on this widow? who has opened her home to me. Why have you killed her son? So what Elijah, so what Elijah, so Elijah, is, he's talking to God just like he's talking, he's talking to God, he's holding a conversation with God just like he was holding a conversation yeah. with man. And that's the same thing, that's the same thing when, when our children are going through, when our children are going through certain things, that's the same thing that you, you, can, you can talk to God. God, why is, has this happened? God, I need you to talk to me. God, I need your help. You need you need to go in and have go yes. into your go yes. into your bathroom sanctuary. Say, God, I can't. God, you gotta help me on this one. Yes. So Elijah is saying, Why, God? Why have you why have you brought this terrible thing on this widow? Remember, he said, remember I said the 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 two most psychological stressful things in a person's life, remember I said it's the loss of a spouse and the loss of a child. So she's a widow. She had already lost her husband. Now her son has stopped breathing. And so, so Elijah said, why God? Three times he stretched himself out full limp on the boy. So three times. So this boy, this picture, this boy is laying on, this boy is laying on Elijah's bed and he just lays on him. He just lays on the says three <laughs> times. And he says, God, my God, put breath back into this boy's body. Yeah. And that's the way we're supposed to pray for our children when they're dead and trespasses and sin. God, I speak life over them. Yes. I don't care what the judicial system has oh, said. Wow. God, I don't care if they are out oh, there bad oh, oh, God, oh. I don't care if they two, seven, four, five, uh, whatever oh, gang oh, name is out there now. I don't care what they are. God, breathe life into my child. Yes. God, restore my child. Hallelujah. God, heal my child. Go. God, uh, deliver my child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God handle the remains. Ooh. We got to know, we, we, we got to know when we in our zone and when we stepping into the God zone. Yes. We got to know the difference. So it says, Elijah. In, in, in verse, in, in, you know, I'm reading verses 21 through 23. Say, God, my God, put prayer back into this boy's body. God listens to Elijah's prayers and put breath back into his body. Hallelujah. He was alive. Hallelujah. He said, God, listen. God is listening. Just because God is not talking don't mean he's not listening. Hallelujah. God has, God has a lot of respect for conversation. You know, two people can't talk at the same time. So just because God is not talking does not mean that he's not listening. The Bible says, God listened 
to Elijah's prayers and put breath back into his body. He was alive. Elijah picked the boy up, carried him upstairs, carried him downstairs from the loft and gave it to his mother and said, here's your son, said Elijah, alive. Here is your son, alive. See, see, see your children saved. See your children Say calling brother. on the name of the Lord. See your children walking in their purpose. See your children delivered. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to believe the invisible. You got to do like Abraham. You got to call those things that be not as though they are. I remember years ago, you know, we used to when we used to have uh, our pastors used to go. They used to go on fast, and they would just they would just have this blessed oil. And they say, you take this blessed oil. They say, you say when when that little booger is not around, you know, <laughs> you, you know what? Anoint, anoint them gym shoes. Yes. You know, when they thought, oh, Lord, I was going to the party. And I don't know why, but I decided to come home. Yeah, because I put some holy oil yes. on, the, on the soles. That's why you That's why you did a about face and say, I don't think I'm going tonight. You know, anoint, the, anoint their parents. Anoint your house. He said, he's alive. God can handle the remains. Amen. The woman said unto Elijah, I see it all now. You are a holy man. Because first she was checking him. You know, you know, you coming in here barging on this, you know, exposing my sins and killing my son. You know, who yeah. you think you is? But Amen. she says, I see it all now. So she was in, in, a, in an indirect way without saying that she was apologizing. I'm so sorry for checking you earlier. No, my bad. Because I see now you are a holy man. Why did she say he was a holy man? When you speak, God speaks a true word. Hallelujah. And again, that was the message. That was the message version that some of you were trying to follow along in King James. But that was the message version. It's first Kings, the 17th chapter, the 17th through the 24th verse. Now I just want to give you, go to another story when it comes to um, widows and allow God to have no remains. This is the widow at name. And I'm going to be in St. Luke, the 7th chapter, 11 through the 16th verses. Again, I am reading from the message version. And it came to pass the day after that he went to a city called Nain, talking about Jesus. And many of the disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. So here we, we have, we have. A same scenario like we had when Elijah and Zerah put her Zerah pair. She's a widow. Her son has died. Hallelujah. Widow in name. You know, God, you know, God, God never changes. If, if, if you do it for one person, he'll do it for another. He has no respect for persons. It's like he blessed the widow at Zerapath. He's gonna bless the widow at name, and he's gonna he's, he can bless you also. So St. Luke, the seventh chapter, eleven to the sixteenth verses. I'm at the 12th verse now. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. So now she's basically on her own. She's basically on her own. There, there was the law that said how they were supposed to take care, that the widows were supposed to be taken care of, but still that can't replace her loss. Um, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. He didn't say, you know what, I'm just passing through. I ain't got time for this. He had compassion on her. He had feelings. The Bible says in Hebrews, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched. He's touched by our feelings. So when we're going through something, Jesus is not, not only saying, I understand the facts. He's saying, I feel the pain. Yes. It's one thing for me to say, I understand what you're going through, mm -hmm. but it's another thing for somebody to say, I feel your pain. That's right. I feel what you're going through. Right. You know what? I'm just Amen. going to be there for you. So he said he had compassion on her, which said he felt what she was going through. And this is what he told her. He said, we not. And he came and touched the bear, and they that bear him, him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. So he's speaking life into the young man. He said, young man, yes. I say unto thee, arise. Yes. The same thing what Elijah was praying. 
Hallelujah. When he says, God, my God, you know, put, you know, put breath back into his yes. body. Yes. As long as there's life, there's hope. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let, don't let, I don't care what you see. I don't think, I don't care how things look. Never forget what God told you. Amen. Never forget God's word. I don't care what it look like. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Ray, have learned, have learned, we, we, we're not shaking by what we see. That's right. We're not shaking. A lot of times, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we've been, it's been a lot of swift transition in our life. And sometimes in our lives, it may look like to you that, oh, they starting over again. They starting over again. But you know what? We not starting over again. We just never give up. That's right. I we know that's right. Give up. I know that's we right. We never give up. Oh, here we go. Some people, some people this born without a do not give up button. And I be one of them. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. So who was the one that was speaking life into the situation? It was Jesus. Who was the one who was speaking life into the situation when it came to the will of Zarephath? God. So that it says, no, that's above my pay grade. I can't speak life. <laughs> only, only Jesus. Amen. Only God Amen. has authority to yes, speak ma'am. life. Yes, ma'am. It, 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 it didn't say that he called, because remember he said in the scripture, many of the disciples went with him. He didn't call. He said, oh, Peter, I want you to come over here and I want you to speak life in this son. This, uh, oh, Mark, I need you to come over here. He says, no, Jesus said, young man, I say to unto thee arise. And he that was dead set up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all and they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen among us and God had visited his people. Mm. So, 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 so we see so we see in this particular story about the widow and name. If we just, just do a quick just do a quick summary of an overview. We see in verse 11 that sometimes life just caves in. Some, sometimes life just deals, just deals you a bad hand. So we see in verse 11. But then we see in verse 13 that Jesus had came and he had, he's going to have compassion. He's going to have compassion on her. And like we had said, I think Pastor Gray had said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter how people treat you. If you have a sincere heart, God's going to find you. He's going he, he, he's, he's to find you. If you have a sincere heart, he's going to find you. He's going he, to he's gonna seek you out. You know, that, that, that last prayer, he's going to seek you out. He's going to send someone. He's going to send someone your way to prove that his word is true. He's going to send someone. If you got a sincere heart, God going to find you. I, 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 don't, I don't care how you walk down the street, you're trying to lean mug and look like you're all tough. God is saying, you know what? Go to that one right there. Because his heart is right. He's sincere. And before you know it, that person is breaking down and crying and saying, man, you know what my, my grandfather was a preacher, man. You know what, man? These streets ain't nice, God. These streets ain't my friend. Can, this, can you just help me? Can you just mention me? Can you just show me a better way? So he had compassion. Then we say in verse 12 that she had lost her husband. And check this out. Even though, even though it was said that there were many mourners, she yet stood alone. Because you know, you 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 could be going, you could be going through something so horrific in your life, and you could be in a room full of people, but you yet feel so alone. Has anybody ever been there? Said, I still, I still, I still feel alone. So she, the the, the Bible said that there were, it was a group of people, it was a group of mourners. But she still stood alone. Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, he got up. Hallelujah, he got up. Why? Because God is able to handle the remains. He's yes, able. Amen. He's the one that's able on, to Carolyn. do exceedingly in the Let him use you, baby. Remains. Mm -hmm. Remains sometimes represent the end of our strength. Remains sometimes Represent trying to do things in our flesh. But that's why Hebrews said it. Hebrews said that 
he has who has entered into this world, and who has entered into there's a rest for the people of God. It's Hebrews 4, 9 and 11. I'm going to go back to that again. It says there's, there's a rest that remains therefore to the people of God, for he that is entered into this rest, he has also ceased from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore labor into this rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So, like I said, we know that they were talking, we know they were talking about um, the works of the law, but then also Jesus is not just he, he just does not die for our salvation, but he also died so that we don't have to try to do things in the arm of the flesh. That we don't have to try to figure that we don't have to figure it out. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. So, 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 and so on this morning, if you're weary for whatever reason, no matter how complex the situation may be, to you it may, to you it may seem like, God, there's no hope. I don't know what to do. That's to remain. That's when you need to step back and let God do what he do. We have to understand when, when we have to understand that when we're functioning in the God zone, when we need to step back. And let God know what he do. He, say, he, he says, come. He's saying, take this light yoke of believing in me. That's what he's saying. He said, my yoke, all you got to do is believe. You just got to believe that the power behind the promise is more powerful than what you're going through. Absolutely. That's all he's asking Amen. you to believe, is believe that. And if it's hard, you know what? You, you, don't, you, don't, have, you don't have to go through it alone. Hallelujah. You're going to find rest. And when we say rest for our soul. That's the soulless room. That's where all the drama and stuff takes place. He said, you will find rest for your soul in that soulless room so they will give you peace when you don't feel, when, when you don't feel uh, overwhelmed. When you don't feel like you're going to go snap, crack, or pop. That's what that is for. And to the mothers out there on today, you know, many of us are dealing with dead visions. You know, we had dreams for our daughters. You know, we felt now she will ruin her life. Girl, now what you gonna go and done did that now for? We felt that they have ruined their lives. You know, you had desires for your son, but you felt like he has destroyed his life. You had, man had a vision for your marriage, man had hope for your life. Hallelujah. But life is not about waiting for the storm to pass. Life is about learning to dance in the rain. Yeah. You know, you, you you gotta get to the point where you know what uh, you know what I'm dancing in, I'm dancing in the rain. Yeah, you no, know, it's it's, it's yes. raining. It's raining cats and dogs and hellfire and everything else. But Lord, I'm dancing in the rain. Amen. Why? Because God, I know that you can handle the remains. Go to God. God, I Say that, one, uh, the old song we used to we used to sing years ago in the Baptist church. Father, I lift my hands to you, to thee. No other help I know. Hallelujah. God can handle the remains. He can restore that vision. He can restore your child. Yes, he, can. he can bring them back. Yes, yes he can. But we just got we, we just got to understand when when we have to stop it, when we have to turn it over to him. He's gonna restore that vision. He's gonna bring he's gonna breathe new life into the situation. He's gonna bring new life into your child. If you just let go and just give it to him. Psalms 34, 15 through 19. And I'm reading the King James the verse says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open until their cry. God heard Elijah's cry. He heard when Jesus prayed, his prayer was heard. He says, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear and deliver them all, deliver them out of. Their troubles. When we in the bathroom curled up in the knot, slinging snot, saying, God, I can't, God help me, God, I can't help me. He's hearing our cry. Uh -huh. He's gonna deliver us of all the, of our troubles, not only our troubles, but our children's troubles. The Lord is nigh to them that have a broken heart. That's why I say if you're sincere and you're contrite and your heart is broken, God's gonna find you. You've been identified. It's sincerity that identifies you. Not, not what church you go to, not how much you give, not, not that you are a fifth generation Kojic preacher. 
It's your sincerity. It's, it's, that's who he's, that's who God is near to. If your heart is broken on this morning, he's near to you. If you have a contrite spirit, God is nigh you. If you're sincere, God is near you. He says, and save as such of a contract spirit. So he's close to the broken heart, and he's going to deliver the ones that are contract. Many other afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he delivered them out of them all. So we may not see God or even know God. This, and, and, and this is this is the thing about when, even when it comes to um, unsaved children. They may not know God. They may not can see God. But you know what? God knows and God sees them. And that's important. He knows them and he sees them. Hallelujah. God, God, he's attentive to the voice of the hurting. He will be, God will, you know what? God will meet you right where you end up. He ain't scared. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not gonna go over there. They ended up over there. I'm gonna wait to there. I'm gonna have to wait to the church. Oh, wow. Ooh, no, Lord Jesus. They, they, they where? They on? They, they on what? They on 19th and Brown? Oh, God said I can't go there. God will meet you right where you end up at. Hallelujah. He hears you when nobody else hears yes. you. Yes. Just like the story of Hagar. Remember the story we had when we were talking about the names of God. We talked about the name of Hagar, saying how the names, two names, was El Roy, our God sees, and El Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there. So just like with Hagar, there's a well in your wilderness. Don't matter. Don't matter. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's a very present help. Hallelujah. He sees our afflictions and directs us to, and what he does, he sees our afflictions, he directs us into prayer with him, then through that prayer, that prayer directs us to a promise to sustain us. That's how God works. Hallelujah. Not only, not only is he able to see our troubles, but we got to be reminded of everything that God is able to do. Proverbs 15 and 3 says, For so the eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the good and the evil. That's why he ain't scared to go on 19th and Brown. You know what? That, that, you know what? That, that, that's, that's, that's why, that's why he, he's not scared to go to the good. His eyes are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. He sees when things are chaotic and we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. And the beauty about it, is that not only is his eyes on the sparrow, but he watches over us. You know, we sing that song, his eyes are on the sparrow, but he watches me. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that he's watching over you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And based on the mere fact when he says in Proverbs 15 and 3, his eyes are everywhere beholding the good and evil. Amen. Yes. This is so that God sees everything. And we should purpose in our heart to let God, God, I'm going to let you. I'm gonna let you, God. I'm gonna let you handle those remains. I'm, you know what, God? I'm, 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 I'm gonna let you deal with you. Amen. God, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you handle. It. Sometimes it's just best to let God handle it anyway, because if we handle it, we might end up in jail. That's right. So you know what? <laughs> we just, you know what, God? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna step back. I'm just gonna step back a, a few Amen. steps. And I'm, God, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let you take care of this. Because I, because I cherish my freedom. <laughs> you know what? Orange, you know, orange has never been orange has never been one of my favorite colors. <laughs> never has been. Amen. <laughs> so God, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna let you handle that. And so for today, I'm gonna the, the battle we're, we're dealing with over the next few weeks. We're gonna be dealing with a mother's battle plan and what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I'll eventually type it out and give it to you. So remember last week. Last week we said the battle plan on last week was no, step number one was to start on your knees. So that's remember we said if you don't start in prayer, it's a false start. Right. I'm gonna start at the mall. I'm gonna start at Disneyland. I'm gonna start at um, Mall of America. It's your character that raises your children. That's right. Not your looks. 
It's your character that raises your children. So if you so if you start at Mall of America, if you start um, on Amazon, if you start at Disneyland, it's a false start. Pray. Evaluate your position. Evaluate where you are. Are you in the God zone? And I'm going to call that the no-fly zone. There, there, there is there, there is uh, in in military there is something called the no-fly zone. That means that that, that that you're not supposed to enter that. I remember some years ago, me and Pastor Roy. I think President Bush was the president. And this is why I want to give you this idea how how um, important it is to stay out of the room that God moves in in the room that we move in. Some years ago, I think it was President Bush had came to, he had came to Milwaukee. And then Pastor Ron, we were just, we were laying in the bed, and all of a sudden I heard this weird sound. It just said, ear, 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 ear. I told, I said, bro, I said, those are not regular airplanes. Airplanes don't do air, air, air. And I said, that's definitely not a helicopter. So what had happened? When, whenever a president comes to a city, they automatically do, there's automatically an area over the city called the no-fly zone. No planes can fly in that area. So what happened, this poor, this poor pilot, he, I don't know if he didn't get the news or he didn't know, but what had happened, he had accidentally flew into the no-fly zone. And they were getting ready to take him out. So all we heard was, ew, 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 fried jets from everywhere. And so what they, what they did, the closest airport, when we saw it on the news, the closest airport was Timmerman Field. So what these fighter jets did, they 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 forced they forced this this young man, or I don't know, they, they forced the pilot down at Timmerman Field. Why? Because he was in a no-fly zone. So that's so when I so when I say let God handle the remains, there's some when it comes to the remains, that's in the God zone. The only thing, the only thing that we that we put in, we don't put our works of flesh in the God zone. The only thing that we put in the God zone are for prayers. We offer up the sacrifices of praise. God, I just thank you for what you're going to do for my son. God, I thank you for what you're going to do for my daughter. God, I, th I thank you. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for not taking them out. God, yes. I thank you for not allowing that ability to take them Jesus. out. God, I thank you for your grace. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's so that's the difference between works. And let God handle the remains. So when you think about, so when every time you think about when you're not giving God the remains, just think about them fighter jets. I mean, it. I mean, it went on for a minute. And I was like, whoa! I I know that that poor pilot. I know he was probably about. I said he probably was about to faint. <laughs> but they finally. But they find. I mean, they were. They. It, it was serious. When I heard that in the air, I said, Oh my goodness! I said, What in the world? It's going on. I know we weren't in war, we weren't getting invaded, but I knew something was going on in the atmosphere. So that God zone, something is going on in the atmosphere. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against, you know, physical yes. challenges. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty for God. That's why he says, come unto me. Cast your cares upon me. I will give you rest. I can handle those remains. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Teach we're, gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get ready to pray. Yes, ma'am. But one but one thing what I what I what we what I have to um, say about this is that when when we're, when we're raising our children, even when we're dealing with individuals, and I think this will kind of help you when it comes to the God zone and you know where you know where where I should. Where I should step out. We had to factor in. We had to factor in three things. Not even in our children's life, but in everyone's life. We had to factor in choice. 
We have to factor in free will and we have to factor in God's purpose. We have to factor in choice. We have to factor in free will and we have to practice, factor in purpose. Proverbs 19.21 says, you know, many other devices in a man's heart, but the counsel, but nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that is going to stand. So that's going to that's gonna be the prayer. You can't beat the counsel of the Lord into him. You can't take it. You can't say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take away yourself and the counsel of the Lord is going to come to pass. That's going to come through prayer. Hallelujah. Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you. He yes. knows the plans he has for that child. Hallelujah. It's not slack that anybody should perish. But you know what? In, 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 in spite of all this, all the stuff that's going on. You know what's so good about it? Jesus yet makes house calls. That's right. That's right. He'll yet come see about you. Amen. He yet makes yes. house calls. Yes. So when so when he comes, let him handle the remains. You know, Father, I'm just I'm, I'm giving this to you in Jesus' name. That your child, you know, you I'm 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 just I'm just here as a steward over their life, but God, I give them to you. So that's the way we're going to approach the throne of grace on this morning. God, through the flesh, I am not going to enter the no fly zone. I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to enter. I'm not going to enter the God zone in the arm of flesh. I'm going to enter. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to enter with my with my spiritual with my spiritual weapons on. I'm going. I'm going to enter the arm in the spirit. So when he comes, let him handle the remains. That's the way we. That's the way we're gonna approach it. So we're just gonna you just bow your head. We're just gonna pray on this morning. And I don't. I, I don't. I don't believe what situation your child is in. I don't care what you're going through. Your child is valuable in God's sight. Your child means something to God. It's not about the opinion of the world. So Lord, I thank you on today for mothers. God, I thank you for those that are recently that recently become mothers. God, I thank you for. The patient ones, the steadfast ones, God, the busy ones. God, we even thank you for the grandmothers who, who love and support the grandchildren. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for them. And God, bless them. Not only, we're not asking you just to bless them just that one day out, that one day out of your God, but bless them, God. Bless the fruit of their labor, God. God, we honor their work on today, God. Today we declare that a mother's work is Christ-like, God. God, and we ask you, God, that you give, not only give the mothers, but give the fathers to handle the remains. Hallelujah. And I, I guarantee you, if you give God the remains, your blood pressure going to go down. I guarantee you, if you give God the remains, your, your high cholesterol gonna get better. We gotta give God the remains. God, we just God bless them, God. God allow them to see what is hidden. God allow them to see in their child, God, what maybe words cannot speak. God, God, give them a stronger, give them a stronger spirit of discernment, God. God, God that visit them in dreams, God. Show them, God. Yes. Hallelujah. It's like you did in the old testament, God. You showed the children of Israel the enemy's plans. Show our brothers the enemy's plans, God. We cover our children with the blood of Jesus. We offer them up to you, Father. We give them to you on this morning, God. God, handle the remains, God. Breathe life into our children again on this morning, God. Have them come and say, what must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. God, have them come and change their song, God. Change their song, God. Have them come and say, I love the Lord. I cry. All right, I'm going to shout that in the Lord. I'm going to give you the glory and the praise of the Lord. The devil is a liar. He shall not have our children. He comes with us of love. We speak life into them, God. They shall live and they shall not die, God. How do we ask if you take your heads off our children, God, and as we close on this morning, God, we just ask God, look on those mothers that lost those teenagers on last week, God. Yes. The other week, God, touch them, God. God, yes. every mother that is going through any type of loss of their child yes. this morning, God, yes. we stand, God, we interested yes. with them, God. Yes. Touch them, God. Send their 
see your love, God. Let them know that you're not only going to understand what they're going through, God, but God, let them know that you feel. Hallelujah. You feel what they're going through. Hallelujah. God, bless our children to be a reflection of you. Bless our children to walk in the narrow way. God, and strengthen the, strengthen the inner Strengthen the inner man, God. New strength, Lord. Strengthen the inner man on today, God. Ha, y'all don't go. Shout that in, don't go. We glorify you. We glorify you in this place. The name that is above every name. We cry out to you of this morning, God. We ask you to save, God. We ask you to deliver, God. It's only that you can. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for sending your son. We thank you, God, for salvation. We thank you for healing, God. We pray that they will be filled with the fullness of God. Yes. We pray that their purpose and their plan shall go forth in their lives, God. We declare it. We declare it in Jesus' name on this morning. Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap this morning. We give God the glory and praise and glory. And what that's, we, we, you know, we, we, just, we just appreciate and we love all the mothers. And like we had said on, we had often said, mother is not, mother, I'm going to say like motherhood is not a gender. It's a spirit. Because you because you have some men, you have, you have men, you have siblings, you know, some of us that were the oldest sibling in our family, sometimes we were given the responsibility to either help. So don't wait. So when you so when you think about Mother's Day and you think about motherhood, don't discriminate. It's not a gender. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And anyone, anyone who has that down, you know, from uncles to aunts to grandmothers to fathers to brothers and sisters, it's a spirit that God has placed down on the inside of us. And we're given, we're given the responsibility to impart into that child, to deposit into that child. Most importantly, to pray for that child. Amen. But most importantly, on the day, you got to let God handle the remains. Bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.